So we are continuing today on the topic that we started, the voice of the ant. The voice of the ant. We are continuing with that. I don't know where we are right now, but I just want us to just sing this song. Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, there is no one like you. Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. You are the Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. He's the covenant keeping God. Has he said a thing in your life and shall it not come to pass? What he says he will do. He will do exactly what he says he will do. I don't know what you asked him for, but I know the God I serve. The God that made the heavens and the earth, the one that says yes, and no man can say no, the undefeated champion, the undisputed king, that is the one that says today that whatever you ask in my name, I will do unto you. So I don't know what you feel you want to ask him for, just ask God for anything anything at all don't ask him for things that you can do yourself don't ask him for things that you know you can make happen yourself ask him for things that you know by yourself you can't make happen let's prove our god he's the one that he doesn't even need you to do that miracle he can make that miracle happen by itself father we see we give you glory you are the alpha and omega there is no one like you, Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way, O oh Lord, in this place, have your way, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. So we are still on the, the voice of the ant, the voice of the ant, and that is explained it so well to us. Can we kindly open our Bibles today? We're just going to run through it, then I'll take it a bit further. That is going to continue with the voice of the covenant tomorrow. Can we open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs 6? Proverbs 6. You are mighty warrior. You are great in battle, Jehovah is your name. You are mighty warrior, you are great in battle, Jehovah is your name. He says we should stand still and see him fight our battles for us. He told Moses to tell the Israelites that the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. And I decree upon your life, that problem you are seeing today, you shall see it no more. Today is the end of that problem. If you are watching it live now, today, right now is the end. If you are going to watch it in the next three hours, in the next one month, next one week, that moment you are watching it, the moment you are hearing me say this, that becomes the end of every problem in your life. That becomes the end of every problem in your life because he is the one that can end situations. He has all power in him. Hallelujah. Proverbs 6. I'm going to read from verse 6. He says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Consider how she behaves and be wise. Go to the ant, overseer or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. They have no ruler, they have no overseer, yet they provide their food in the summer. 
They gathered in summer and gathered food in the harvest. They provided her meat. She provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. So every day there's always food in the house of the ant because he thinks of the day before that day comes. So the lessons we learn from the ant, I'm just going to go through them, then we we'll go on one thing. The first one that he talked about is they work hard. The ants are not lazy. They are not lazy. And he also told us some other things. I'm just going through the notebook. We're going to go do some other things. But for some people that will just be joining us today, he said something and it's like a known fact. He said the ants can carry 20 times their normal weight of load. So that means if I weigh if I weigh, <laughs> if I weigh 75 kg, <laughs> don't laugh at me, please, don't laugh at me. If I weigh 75 kg, that means the ants can, if I was an ant, I can carry 75 kg times 20. So the ants can, can carry something 20 times their normal weight. I don't even think I can carry something that is two times my normal weight, self. even my own normal weight. Self. I don't think I can carry this thing for so long, I'll be tired. But the ants can do that. It says the ants. They build their ant hill. Their ant hill is like 500 times taller than them in height. So they, they don't look at, I'm short, so I have to build a short house. They aim high. They go far. They don't look at what is around them. And the surprising thing, their lifespan is, the ants has a lifespan of 75 to 60 days. So they accomplish all these great things with the little time they have. They live so short on earth, yet they accomplish all these ants are not lazy. They are not lazy. They work so hard. They are not lazy. Our text we read from Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 8. The ants, they are not lazy. They are hard workers. They are hard workers. Solomon was telling the lazy person, go and look at the ants. Don't look at me. If you say me now, if I use myself to say, let me tell you, you say, ah, she be your father was. Just go and look at the ants. The insignificant people, like, if you see an ant crawling in your house, you might not really bother like that. But if you see a cockroach, or like spiders, you can be sure because you see like ants, they can't really do anything, they're harmless, they're not important. It says look at the unimportant people and learn from them. So number one thing, the ants are hard workers, they are not lazy. Number two thing that is said is the ants teach us how to plan, they are planners. The ants are always planning. They are planning for their tomorrow today. They don't even, they don't wait for the tomorrow to come and say, "Ah, let the day." They plan ahead. See, there's no. Uh, I'm not trying to say that you should not enjoy your today. But when you're trying to enjoy your today, you should also think of your tomorrow. Do not eat your tomorrow today. Why trying to say, "I don't want to stress about tomorrow." God will take care of my tomorrow. You not eat everything. God gives you your bread and your seed. Why he gives you your seed is so that you can plant it for tomorrow, so that tomorrow you won't come and be crying to him again for the same thing. So the ants are planners. We should be planners. Number three thing that he told us is the ant teaches a lesson of participation. 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 And he said the ants, um, let's say this is a bio, the ants want to take it. There are like 50 ants that come here. One ant will not stand there. We are not doing anything. They don't act like that. All of them come together to work to carry that thing. They participate. They always they work as a team. They work together. They are a team. You, if you say, no, I don't need any person to this thing, very soon you will burn out. Um, one of the, um, we were talking about one, a church that, he was saying something about pastor that you should not, you should learn to delegate stuff around. That he even visited the church that the pastor there would be the person to open the door, do the opening prayer, do the praise and worship, do the Bible study, do the everything and lock the door and carry the key. When the pastor is not around, the church is not open. So that person will burn out. But the ants know that they have a short lifespan. To them it's plenty. They have a short lifespan, but they make good use of it. Like, okay, we are going to carry this Bible. Ten ants stay at this front. 15 ants stay here, 20 stay here, everybody participate, join, do everything together. Let's all move at the same time, let's participate at the same time, so we move it faster. If one ant decides to carry this thing by itself, one ant can actually carry this thing. Let me tell you how the, if it were well, just one ant, it will just start breaking it into bits and bits and bits and bits, then start picking it from there. It will take him longer to do that, but when they do it as a group, they take it all at once. Alright, so the next lesson that he told us, about the ants, the ants. He said they work in harmony. They work in harmony. They say he said like they just move, like the flow is just so sweet. They just going. They don't. 
they move in so much harmony they are not scattered they are just you just see the ant line just be going even if they have to corner all of them will corner at the same time it just looks so beautiful like a well arranged song so nice so it says we should walk in harmony saying something i think yesterday or day before yesterday we were like the person that likes to come into somewhere and scatter the place that person is the devil because you should walk in harmony with everybody you are living in somewhere and you just you you thrive in confusion then there's something wrong with you there's definitely something wrong with you you're not of god the next thing he told us is solidarity solidarity the ants they help each other they help each other solidarity they work together they live together they live as a family they work as a single unit solidarity they work together the next thing he said is sharing the lessons we the voice we are hearing from the ants the things we should learn from them the next one is sharing he said sharing one is for them the second one is to store food and you know when i was growing up i, I would look at ants and i just always used to wonder why you see one ant coming like this, you see another one coming, and they just come and they will come and touch it at first. I used to wonder why. Then I was not here, oh, they keep the store food in one stomach for themselves and another for the other person. So I'm just thinking maybe when they see that, they will be like, have you eaten? Have you not eaten? If you have eaten, if you have not eaten, take food from my storage. Like, so they work, to, they share, they share with their friends, with their family, they work together, they care for each other. They don't leave one person. So if you are a Christian and you are seeing your brother in problem, I say, don't worry, my brother, let me pray for you. I know that the, that brother doesn't actually need prayer. What he needs is food. And you, you have enough food. I say, I pray, I prophesy for you. You are not, I don't understand where you are coming from. You have to learn all these things. The next one he talked about was preparation. Preparation, preparation said the ants they prepare they prepare they prepare and he said under that preparation he says they know how to build their capacity they know how to build their capacity they won't say oh um this viral looks like a very good food for us to eat but because it's big now we cannot take it so we'll leave it and we'll come back the next day when we are 10 over 20 they will begin to carry it and even if this by maybe it's only 100 it's 100 people that should carry it but only 50 ants are around they will not say let us procrastinate it they would not procrastinate it they will start doing the work until they send the message to the other one and they will come so they always work they increase their capacity it's when they stay look at the ants can carry something 20 times its normal size so that means he first tried it and saw oh i can carry more than i can carry my size he moves from i can carry my size to two times to three times so that whole thing to 20 means he expanded his capacity so you have to expand your capacity you should not just stay oh because normally i used to look at let, let me bring you to something we can even relate with self when you were good when we let me not say when you were when i was small i knew that i used to, I, I like um series a lot i knew i used to use a small plate but as i started growing bigger my stomach started getting bigger now so I will not be saying one cup of gold demon will not fill me. I need a bigger place you get. So as you are growing, you should expand your capacity. So and expanding your capacity, you are preparing. You will say, okay, um, I started this job as an SSC holder, but I know I want to get to the managing director position. So what do I do? I have to prepare. I have to expand my capacity. I will go for... Um, online courses, I would go for tutorials, I would go for um, night classes or something to get um, the certificate I need for that position. I'll keep preparing. So the ants never stop preparing and they never procrastinate. Procrastination is the killer of destiny, kills time. Now, the next one that he talked about was determination. Determination. The ants are very determined. If they want to take this by road, even if you pursue them, they will come back. They will keep coming, 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 coming until they get what they want. You have to be determined. If somebody tells you no, that does not mean that thing cannot be done. My father used to do something. And it's funny in my house. If you want him to do something, just tell him you cannot do this thing. He will not want to prove to you that that thing can be done. So you should not always give excuses why you should not do something. Give excuses why that thing must be done. Go out of your comfort zone. Go and take some. See, it's not about just hearing all these things. You can hear it. If you don't practicalize it, it will just be like a heavy, what I used to say, it's like an evil you are gathering all the whole information and you're not putting it to use. There's no point in doing all that. The next one he said is 
they utilize every opportunity the ants utilize every opportunity they get every opportunity they get they utilize it if they see something that looks like food they are not yet sure whether it's food they will go to check if it's food ah they're carrying it so they use any opportunities no you see this and i know this will not be for me they utilize every opportunity you have to utilize every opportunity the next one he said was they have concern for others they care for their brothers they care for their sisters they ha have effective communication skills they have effective communication they can communicate like so n you just see only one ant here and you just see sugar you just see sugar here just one ant before you turn and turn again you have seen 20 and before you turn turn 100 like how but they have effective communication skills daddy was saying something but like if you don't know how to communicate very well even in your spa with your spouse with your office you would have issues so communication is key communication is key he said also the ants they have accurate timing they have accurate timing you have to have accurate timing. you have to know when to act when to relax you have to know your timings you have to know when you do whatever you have to do you have to know you should not gonna be doing something that is right at the wrong time because you get no result the next one it says they know when to retreat they know when to retreat when i'm bringing my leg because they're saying ants are hard workers they never give up they never give up they never give up and i'm bringing my leg i want to kill it as you see my leg it will run away it has come back because you see my leg the moment i move my leg it will come back so he knows when to retreat he knows when to come back he knows when to do everything so now i said our text we took our text from proverbs 6 um 6 to 8 so we're going to go further we are still on the voice of the ant, but I want to do something. The first thing we talked about, that we talked about is the ants work hard. They are never lazy. So I want to just focus on that today because that's, this whole thing was, um, Solomon was actually talking to lazy people here. He was talking to lazy people here. So all these things, if you don't deal with laziness, there is no way you can even do the other thing. So laziness is like the bedrock of everything. If you don't deal with that laziness, everything, even if you want to say, I care, you have to actually not be selfish to care for somebody else. So laziness can destroy everything. So today, still under the voice of the ant, I just want to talk about the tragedy of laziness. The tragedy of laziness. Now, our text was from Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. So now I'm continuing from verse 9 to 11. Okay, let me just start from the um, 6 again and just go through everything. It says, Proverbs 6, 6, I'm reading now. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, and consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provides her meat in summer, and gathereth her food in harvest. Verse 9, that's our text now for today. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? when will thou arise out of thy sleep he's asking you how long will you sleep you have been doing this thing since you have been sleeping here since you have been saying one day you blow one day you blow two years has passed three years has passed five years have passed you are still saying one day you blow when will you finally blow it says how long will thou sleep O sluggard when will thou arise out of thy sleep verse 10 yet a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands to sleep so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. <laughs> so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. So that means it's like somebody's come to visit you from the village, come and live with your house. And thy want as an armed man. You know, when somebody's coming from the village, like a visitor, say someone that, that you want to come like, so, like someone that traveleth, have you? When someone is traveling that is coming to come and pass the night in your house or come to visit you, the person will call you and say, Hey, I'm coming to your house, I want to stay over blah 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 blah. Then I can say, Okay, I will arrange a room for you. So when you're being lazy, you are practically arranging the room for poverty. You are arranging the room. Then it now continues. After you have finished arranging the room now, the next phase will now be as an armed man. This one now you will not take permission from you. He will not call you to tell you it's coming, you just come inside and invade the house. So, any, when you are um, saying, telling yourself that I will not do this thing, I will give you, are giving yourself excuses, you are just calmly inviting poverty. Come, I've made a room for you. I've decked the bed with <laughs> ornament of Egypt and all those grandma. You are telling, you are decking the bed. Very soon, it will not now be calm again. You know, when this thing is coming, it's becoming slowly. My father used to give analogy that when you turn off the fan, 
it will not show it will not go off immediately it will still roll slowly slowly so when the um, poverty comes because when the want comes you won't need that scum fully it will be coming small small maybe before you see eat three square meal with two two meals you now be reducing to three square meal to one meal you say hey, there's no problem very soon when the armed man comes even half square meal you won't see that's when your eyes will not clear so now i said our topic our, our topic today is the tragedy of laziness still under the voice of the hand if you don't deal with laziness all these things you won't even, the, you won't see the other cooperation or sharing or you won't be able to do it because you'll be lazy you won't even want to move a muscle so now number one thing i want you to take note of is god never uses a lazy person god never ever ever uses a lazy person god will never use a lazy person we know about david david was in the field in the bush taking care of his father's sheep and god now says i have found a replacement for saul i have found a king i want you to anoint over israel even the Saul said that god wanted to replace so um he met samuel when he went to go and look for his father's asses that got missing now you see if you read the bible there i think that's in first samuel 9 he said saul went with his father's servant so he could have said my father is a rich man servants go and look for it but he went with the servants to go and look for it so he was actually working god never uses lazy people he never uses lazy people we know about elisha elisha was in his father's field plowing he was working that's where elijah came and met him and threw the mantle on him so god never uses lazy people gideon when god saw when the angel appeared to him he was the uh, midianites were oppressing the israelites and if you plant things they will come and take it so him he was now was walking and the angel of the lord now came and told him who he was called him by his real name a mighty man of valor him he was seeing himself as a small person but the angel of god showed him who he truly was i pray god gives us more understanding of this in the name of jesus also the other two people i want to talk about to moses and joseph their own story is a very unique story now the first person i'll talk about is joseph Joseph was in his father's house. He got the first dream. Now, when I talk about this Joseph story with some of my friends, I'm like, Joseph was the butterfly or the flower prince. Because he was in his father's house, living nice. My father would say something that Joseph was the amigo of the house. Because he was the one that would come and tell the father that the brothers are partying or that the brothers are doing this. So he was the one giving gossip. He was just busy enjoying his life. He wasn't doing any serious work. The brothers were getting annoyed that them they would go and walk inside the field. Joseph would be in the house learning how to read and write, wearing new clothes, they'll be dressing him up as trophy baby. He's not doing anything. So and God now gave this guy, this trophy baby. You see, now Jacob, because of like he loved the mother of Joseph very, very well. So he was trying to overpamper him now. He, he he did not do it that he went to waste his son's destiny, but the only truth is that with the way Joseph was going in his father's house, his destiny would have been wasted. As in wasted, he had become a lazy moment. So God gave him the first vision and told him, he said, the moon, the stars, sun and bow. Nothing again, the wheat, ah, the brothers now into to with him. And when the, he told the first dream, the brothers were biting body, that one did not see the near second dream that came. And he now even came, the father now gave him coat of many colors again. He now started going and be going to go and be visiting his brothers. So they were now vexing for him and they sent him away. Not sent him away like that with good eye. They sent him away in a wicked way as per the tie his hand with chain, remove his clothes. So the son that have not hammered him all his life, they carried him in chains and he entered the sun. He entered the sun inside the whole desert. So the sun really hammered his head. The whole fresh boyness he left him. Now he went to Potiphar's house. Now God already had a plan for him that this guy, God David um, Joseph, was going to be a prime minister. He was going to practically as of that time Egypt was like the world power. So anybody that was ruling really Egypt was practically ruling the world. And God knew that Brother Joseph has not even learned nothing. He doesn't know nada about <laughs> human management. He cannot manage human life. He only knows how to eat, how to read, how to um, wear fine dress. He doesn't know nothing. So he had to, he now went to Potiphar's house. And when he went to Potiphar's house, he now started working. He did not start complaining. That's the thing. Eh? there are two types of people there are some people that they know they are lazy and they are comfortable with that they are lazy and there are some people that know that they are lazy and they are willing to change those ones they can be salvaged but the ones that know they are lazy are not willing to do anything they are on their own 
to sell God to Potiphar as he knew. Oga, I just have to change my whole way. If I continue the Fresh Prince of just um, Jacob House, hung out with some mommy here. So he still working. I still working. I now found that this work is flowing inside my body. I'm sure that someone in his mind will be like, ah, why was I not even working with my brothers? This thing is not hard to mop floors, it's not hard to sweep now, it's not hard to arrange things. And he's still working in the house that Potiphar noticed him. I knew that, ah, this guy, if I give him something to do, he will do the thing and not that he just do the thing alone. The thing will not become finer than how I give him. Let's say if I give him my um, room to clean, he will clean it and rearrange it to the way that it's looking very beautiful. He still doing those things and put it for that still scene. And that cook now took him and was giving, you know, you test somebody with responsibility, test seeing that he was doing very good. And he now brought him to be in charge of the whole house. He wasn't lazy. Brought him to be in charge of the whole house. Then the devil now stroke. The devil is a, is a bad guy. Devil now stroke with Potiphar's wife. She now do me, Joseph, come to me. Joseph now say, him the move, and they threw him into prison. Now in the prison again, he began to work. You know, first he went to Potiphar's house and he worked there with his fellow slaves and other Egyptians. Now they now sent him to prison. So he now went to learn how to manage criminals. Because he, they put him in charge of the prison, so he was managing criminals. You know, there's a difference between managing slaves. This ones, they are just slaves, they're just working. Then there's another one that somebody is a hardened criminal. The criminal, a, like a killer, a thief. You now learn how to manage them very well. That's serious. God gave him serious training. Then when he was at age 30, God was like, now he's ready. He's ready. And now came. That's how God now arranged everything. And by the time God was like, okay, Joseph has graduated from the school now. It is time. He now gave Pharaoh the dream that nobody could interpret except Joseph. If he was lazy, he wouldn't have gotten there. The next person still that God still saw walking was Moses. Now, God spoke to him. First time God spoke to him ever was when he was carrying goats in the mountainside. That the burning bush. That's the first time God spoke to him. But before that time, he was marked to be the deliverer. Be. But he grew up in the palace. Yes, quite all right. God wanted him to learn something there. But he only learned how to um, give the decree, pass the decree, and if things do not come, we kill them, we do this one, we do this one. And God's like, this kind of person, the way he's doing, he went to go and separate fight. The person now saying, we kill the person. If he can't go like this to come and do the children of Israel, oh, he will use fire and burn all of them. Because the people of Israel, the Israelites were already stubborn, mad people. People that have been slaves for 430 years, they are, they are not smiling. So they already are annoyed. They are annoyed with yourself already. There's somebody, Moses now have all temper again. So God is like, oh, no, 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 this guy can't do this. We need, we need to train him small more. He now went and he stayed 40 years. His own training was, he left Egypt at age 40 and he came back to Egypt at age 80. So God had to um, strip him of everything he learned for 40 years and give him another 40 years of training. His own, it was serious because God knew that they are going to carry some mad people and I need you to be well trained for this. And God now saw him. When he God was sure that now he's ready. And he was and just saw him then I said, Okay, speak to him. He did not speak to him since but when he was sure he was ready to do the work, he spoke to him. So now I'm just trying to explain God never uses lazy people. He never ever uses lazy people. He only uses people that work hard. Number two thing. I want you to take note of this. The devil is having a few day in the life of many Christians because they are lazy. The devil is having a few days, he's enjoying his life in the life of many Christians because they are lazy. When you are lazy, the devil, you are giving the devil like all parts come and invade this place. Our text says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little food and you have to sleep. So shall your poverty, so shall your wants come like one that travelleth and I want as an armed man. Your poverty come like one that travelleth and I want as an armed man. When you are there, say, no, I'm not doing this. And they tell you, come and fast and pray, no, ah, also, also, <laughs> you don't know what's happening in your life. Devil is sitting on your head, opening tom tom and licking it. You don't even know. All right. That is to say something. Say the prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. So if you are a lazy Christian, if you are lazy to pray, you have just sold yourself to the devil already. You have given the devil access to your life. All right. So because of our time. Now, what is laziness? Now, please, this thing, it is a tragedy for you to be a lazy Christian. 
it's a tragedy for you to be lazy Christian. When you are a lazy Christian, you are a misplaced Christian. Because remember, you are linda cold or hot. You are not. I would have preferred that you are cold or you are hot. At least be one thing. You are not. I don't know where to place you in. I think from the message translation, it says, "I would." You make me want to puke. You make me want to throw up. Like what nonsense! You're not here. You're not there. You're just. I mean, like, it's, you're not cold. You're not hot. I don't know what to. Will you put him here? No, you cannot do so. Put him here? No, you cannot. Do so. Where will we put you? Nowhere. I just loafing everywhere. Now, what is laziness? Number one, I'll just give you some few points. Now, all these things I'm saying. It's it's like a summary of what I've heard my father preach. Of. It's not like this thing. I'm just going through the whole notes. Like we do this whole thing in the house that he teaches us in the house before we come outside. So we are the first partakers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just telling you some parts that you did not get. I'm a nice person, you know. I got you. All right. What is laziness? Number one, it is resting before you are tired. You are not yet tired. You are resting. That is laziness. It's the same thing as gluttony. What is when you call somebody a gluttony? It means the person is eating even when you're not hungry. So laziness is resting if you are tired. You are not yet tired. You know you can still do more, but the devil is already sitting on your head, looking tom tom. It is beer bombo. I just there. Yeah. Oh, I can't do this nigga. You know you are not tired. So why are you resting? You have a long time. Your body is going to your flesh will rest in the grave. Your spirit will go to heaven if you make heaven and rest there. So why are you resting out there? Why are you resting? You are not old. You are still young. So laziness number one. Is resting before you're tired. Number two, what is laziness? It is dislike for hard work. You don't like hard work at all. Anytime you see hard work, ah, I, I, I cannot come and kill myself. Please, I cannot come and kill myself. This life, I cannot come and kill myself. No, I can't do that. It's like what when you just see hard, you just return around and around. You, ah, you will give me excuse. Be calling. I saw, I was listening to one um, some women just in one day, and I felt so bad when I was saying that. And the woman was telling. Another of her friend that ah, when she went to her husband's village, husband's village that they were telling her to do work, do work, do work. She was not trying to dodge them. That what she now did, she now bought um malt for some of the village women there, and made the village women there do all the whole hard work for her. That she did not do anything. That's serious laziness. Like you don't want hard work. Well, you want to, when they when they finish doing the whole work, you now come and tie Gilead. Yeah, it's like for hard work. That's laziness. Number three, failure to make efforts. Failure to make efforts. You are not even planning to even make any effort. That's laziness. Like at least somebody that even at least try and fail. Let us know you tried and failed and you don't even want to do it. Like that is not for me. It's not for you. How do you know it's not for you? Failure to make effort is laziness. It's laziness. At least attempt. Like in a Nigerian constitution, I think a Nigerian constitution to be a governor, senator, or president, at least you have to attempt to work. They don't say you have to pass. At least attempt, let us know you attempted it. Even if you have F9, let it be that you attempted it. So attempt something. Failure to make an effort is laziness. That means you are late as in the case is severe. Number four thing is doubting your capacity. Doubting your capacity. They have not yet given you a no. They have not told you, ah, this thing, no, I'm not doing it. Eh, eh, I cannot do it. I cannot do this. If the ant was doubting his capacity, if the ant said, no, I cannot carry this thing, he wouldn't have known that he can carry 20 times his normal weight. You are doubting your capacity. You are doubting. Before they say, no, I, I just know I cannot do this. How do you know? Have you tried it before? You doubt your capacity. You won't make any effort. You doubt. They don't say, no, no, no. The ants, they don't doubt their capacity. They try. The ants will come and try to carry this barrel. If he sees he cannot carry it, then you go and start looking for help. But you, you won't even, even put it in here. No, no, that thing. Mm -mm, I can't do it. Even something that later you're not going to say, ah, when somebody else now comes and does it and they're not giving the person all the whole prayer, say, ah, and that's not if you do one more. Why I not come to her? You're just trying to go fast. I hope I'm not talking too fast. All right, so characteristics of a lazy person. Of some be rounding you know? up. Characteristics of a lazy person. Number one, they don't like challenges. If you don't like challenges, you are a lazy person. Because challenges is what expands your capacity. So when you don't like challenges, you are a lazy person. Just tell yourself the truth. When you don't like challenges, when you don't like things that will pull you out of your comfort zone, brother, sister, you are lazy. Don't explain it. Don't say, oh, my stomach, you don't know how my head is doing. You don't know how my eyes. Some people don't do. There's one guy who was telling me one thing, and when he was telling me, he was trying to use it to explain, he was trying to give me an excuse why he couldn't do I told him to do something, and he was trying to give me an excuse why he couldn't do the thing. 
And he's giving me the excuse, he's not still casting himself, okay, blah, blah, blah. I was just looking at him like this. And I said that he said that even in his place of work, he was they just did work that he wanted to go and rest because he was feeling too weak. So he knew that they would not give him pass. So he now faked fainting. And he was looking at me, eyeball to eyeball, and telling me he faked fainting. A full blown man telling me that rubbish that he, as in, I couldn't believe it. He was telling me that he, he had to fake. He just started the work newly to give excuses. They love to give excuses. They always give a reason why they should not work. There's always a reason why they should not work. Ah, hey, see, ah, are you not seeing my leg? My leg is doing so much. See, the legs are cutting me here. No, um, I pencil to touch me nose. You just give me stupid things. They love giving excuses. As in, they love it. They're in love with excuses. They always give excuses why they should not work. If you also know, ah, eh, I, somebody called me, my mother called me at home. Your mother did not call you when you were just in sins. The moment they give you work, ah, my mother is calling me at home. They give you work in your office. Ah, no, um, sir, I would have loved to do this work now, but the MD has called me. The MD told me I'm going to... You don't like work at all. As in, you just give excuses. You're a lazy person. You're a lazy person. Because it's people. My father used to say something that is the person that what I see, he says it's in Igbo. But my Igbo is very... My Igbo is... I can speak Igbo, let's know, please, don't go there, I speak Igbo, but since this is an English broadcast, so everybody hear it, I'll do it in English. It says, it's the person that water sees his leg, that the water we carry. So it's the person that we see that is working, that we say, this person is ready for promotion. If I'm a supervisor and I'm seeing that any time I'm for promotion, I'm saying there's nobody. Even if you are qualified for it, even if you have worked there for 10 years, I say there's nobody, because I don't want you to go and embarrass me. So you go now here, you stay with me. These are the lazy person, they are wishful thinkers. They are wishing, oh, I wish. I just see, um, I'm just going on the road, or I'm just going on the road like this. I just see one bag of money. I don't blow with that. I want that will blow. You are just wishful thinking. You are not putting anything in place for that thing that you want to happen to happen. And just wishing it will happen to happen to happen without putting any effort. You are going nowhere if you are doing that. You are just wishing, 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 wishful thinkers. They are lazy people. Number, I think number four. They are doomed to poverty. Now, let me explain this. They are doomed to poverty. We read it in our text. That um, Proverbs 6, 9-11. Say, get a little sleep, a little slumber, a little food on your hand to sleep. So shall poverty come as one that travelleth, and I want as an armed man. They are doomed to poverty. Poverty is calling them, is hugging them. It's hug as in, it's just for them. When you are, you are a very lazy person, your end is poverty. When you know you don't like work, you don't like anything, your end is poverty. It's as in, it is just going to be for you and all about you. It will be all about you everywhere. It will first come as if it's a friend to you. Very soon it comes and now bullies the hell out of you. By that time, you are not call, do not know you as see that poor man's house. Before they'll be like, um, Brother Joseph is managing. But very soon, poor Brother Joseph, the, bro the poor will now become your first name. You will now become like blind Bartimius. The blindness became the identity. So very soon, poverty will now become the person's identity because the person is lazy. When you are lazy, poverty will soon become your identity. When it becomes your identity, then you now know that you have wasted your time. So wishful thinkers, those that love giving excuses, those that are not, they don't like challenges. The, when those things, when you are seeing those things in your life, you just know that you are lazy. So just tell yourself, I need to change this thing. Now all these things I'm saying is still under the voice of the ant. If you don't deal with all this laziness, if you don't deal with laziness, you cannot plan. Because you like when they to plan, you're like, oh now nah, I want to sleep. Oh. They tell you come and walk with everybody. Oh but help me now. Nah, I'm with you in the spirit. You'll be giving excuses for the other things. So the other lessons you won't even learn it. Determination, you need to be hard working to be determined. So how will you be determined when you are lazy? How will you um communicate to other people when you don't even want to communicate with yourself and tell yourself the truth that you are lazy? So now all this it still relates with it, but I just want I just felt like we should go through the whole um stuff. Number five, I think I'll be ending here. I told you that this all these things. If you really want to get all these things, you can send us messages, you can send some of our um messages to you. They are for sale. Yes. Some of our church messages, like and when do we have service in the church, like there are some messages in the church, all these whole stuff I'm saying are from what I've heard my father say, it's not like I sat down and this, you know, what I heard my father say and the Holy Spirit added his juice to it together. So you can still reach us on our emails, Facebook, 
even on youtube just write a message there that you need the messages and we'll get in contact with you and you can get them we have so many messages like so many life-changing messages that would oh the last one i'm talking to i'm going to talk about today is they are internal dustbins now i'm going to explain this you know how a dustbin is it's just this if i take a dustbin and put it on top this place like this it won't move out of there until i come and move it it just stays in one place so now those under that the internal those things they don't make any move you won't make any move they tell you and um, they're coming to cut you now let them come and cut me this life is ever they leave what is, what is even in it uh, everything you don't even want to do anything they never make any move the internal those means number two under that the internal those means they accept every rubbish thrown at them when something when we know something is a dustbin, so if you are throwing death inside it, so you are setting it. Any rubbish they throw at you, somebody they call you idiot. You say, eh, leave them now. Nah, nah, my God, give me like that. <laughs> Anything they tell you, you just take as 